Hey everybody, so this video is a follow-up to the previous video in which I showed you how to spin up a uh, virtual machine consisting of Docker containers uh, and run a Magento 2 instance on it. If you haven't already watched that and spun up your VM, uh, please go ahead and do that first. And you can get there by clicking on this link, Magento 2 plus Docker. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and show you how to add Redis to your development environment. Um, and why might you use Redis? Well, uh, for one thing, many of your clients and projects will be using it for both caching and for session storage. And so it's important in our uh, continuous development to have our virtual machine, our local development environment, be as much of a replica of the production environment as possible. Okay, And so basically all we have to do, it's a pretty simple operation to add Redis to our virtual machine setup, is come on down to this code block and you might recognize the docker-compose.yaml file from the previous tutorial. And let's go ahead and open up our actual file. Okay, now that we have our docker-compose.yaml file, let's go back to the blog page. And I've highlighted the lines that you're going to want to copy and paste in. So the first is a link to the Redis container. So this is essentially an alias. Normally, when we have an external host of some sort, we would either need a, uh, a domain name or an IP address. But in this case, with Docker, we can link things up by name. So this next, this next little node right here, this is our actual Redis container. So we can just put that anywhere here in the file, but the indentation is important. So the, re the name Redis needs to be properly indented and in line with MySQL, phpMyAdmin, and web. And finally, we need to create a data volume for all of the stuff that Redis stores. Much like the way we store our database data, it, that's going to be the same way that we store the Redis data. So when we tear down our containers and then spin them back up again, we don't lose all of that cache data. Okay, so the very next thing that we need to do is go ahead and add some parameters to our env.php file. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we need to locate the section of this file in which you see session. And we're going to end up replacing these three lines. So come on back to the blog page, copy this block of code, the highlighted part. And we will simply copy and paste and replace this section. And one thing I'll point out here is in a number of places, it asks for either the host or the server name, and you'll notice it's Redis, just like the link from docker-compose.yaml. So instead of using an IP address or some other host name, we're actually just putting in the container name. So let's go ahead and save this file. And so if we go in our browser and, we've, and we try to visit our, uh, our local domain for the Magento 2 instance, we should expect to get a fatal error. So what's happening is we've just changed our configuration and so Magento is looking for the Redis server, but it doesn't find it. And the reason that it doesn't find it is because we haven't spun it up yet. Currently we only have our web, MySQL, and PHP MyAdmin containers running. So when we run Docker PS we can see that. So what we need to do is tear them all down. And now when we spin up, we should see a brand new container in that list. So 
So Redis is right here. And so now when we go ahead and go back to our browser and try to load the site, now it should work. And there we go. So now everything is back to normal, but now all of our caching and session storage is uh, taking place in Redis. And we'll go one step further just to prove that it's working. So let's go ahead and connect to the Redis container. And so the command is going to be Redis CLI monitor. And what we're going to do is we are going to refresh the browser and then immediately pull our terminal back up. And you'll notice that it's all populating with data, which means that it's working exactly as intended. And so that's really all there is to it. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please do stay tuned because in the next video, I am going to show you how to activate uh, XDebug. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.